Okay, so Lineage OS based on Android 13 is now out for the Raspberry Pi 4. It's on the Constacang page, so let's go to that page. And this really is a slick version. Uh, it definitely has got better and better as time has gone on. And I prefer the Lineage OS to the AOSP, the stock Android version of this. Uh, you can see from, if I go back to the home screen, that uh, I've installed the Google Play Store. I'll show how to do that. But let's go to Constacang's page, click on Raspberry Pi 4. There are different devices this is available for, but most of the others are phones. So you can see there's a Raspberry Pi 3 version, but I think that's older versions of Android. So when you look at the list of what's available, so AOSP is stock Android with nothing else done to it, no tweaks or anything else. But the Lineage OS version is uh, a tweaked version. It definitely is more slick than the stock version of Android uh, with quite a few features added in. And if we go down, uh, there is a vast list of what's working. In fact, it's easier to just go through the list of what's not working because it is just hardware video decoding. That's always been a struggle on the Pi uh, with loads of different things. But that said, video playback at 1080 is absolutely fine. So Android has always had good video playback even without that. And thanks to everyone involved in this project, uh, it just keeps getting updates, it keeps getting better and better, and uh, all things like all the information here of how to install it, how to install Google Apps, all of that sort of thing is really well maintained. Here's YouTube playing at 1080. I can't seem to get stats for nerds working, but uh, as you can see, it looks really crisp, looks really clear, really, really impressive. I've had GTA Liberty City Stories and also San Andreas work on Android builds in the past, but for some reason they haven't for a while on the Consta Kang builds. They just don't launch, which is a shame, but something's obviously making it not work. Let's try this Oddmar. Yeah, this seems to be launching absolutely fine. Looks pretty decent. Yeah, that's working. And looks great, lovely and smooth. Yeah, even when there's more things on the screen, it's working absolutely fine. It's a nice level design on this. You get an option when you first install it to have three, two, or just swiping. So if you're using a touch screen, I guess you probably wouldn't maybe use these buttons, but I quite like them because I'm used to them to see what apps are open at the same time and things like that. Um, and also the back arrow is always very important on Android. If we scroll down from the top here, uh, this will release this menu uh, and you see you've got settings here, hotspot, Bluetooth control, brightness control, all sorts of things on here and a notification system. But if I click on the settings one, and if we scroll down, uh, we've got about tablet. So that just tells us bits about the Pi. Uh, this is how you enable developer mode. Uh, and I'll show a bit of that when I show the setup bit of this. But if we go into system and scroll down, there are dedicated Raspberry Pi settings and these keep getting better and better. So. You can see here, audio out is uh, set to three and a half mil jack. That actually defaulted to that. I should have had my speaker plugged in when I was playing the games. Uh, display resolution, you can switch between various different resolutions. This has been problematic in the past, but you can see there's loads of resolutions there. Display rotation, if you're using it in vertical mode. Configuration for the official Raspberry Pi touchscreen. Infrared remote control. You can see all the mouse options here. Uh, we've got overclocking within this as well and all the debugging and SSH. And you can see that hardware video coding is experimental. When I last tried it, uh, it didn't improve it, but it's nice to see that they're always working on it. And the split screen bit's cool. Uh, if you press and hold on an app, you can see you get all these options and we can go left or right uh, and information and so on. But you can see all sorts of extra things have come up here. So if I put it on the left hand side, I can then pick another app to be on the right hand side. So say for instance, I go for YouTube. Oh, I've done YouTube and YouTube. <laughs> well, see what it does. There you go. So you can have two instances of YouTube and it's just very basic split screen, but actually works very well. Uh, Apple have messed it up on the iPad recently with, uh, I think it's called Stage Manager. It, it works terribly. I ended up disabling it within the first hour. Uh, although I have just had an update on my iPad, so I might try it again. So let's show you how to install it. So this version of Lineage was running from an SSD drive, which was working absolutely fine on my Pi 4, uh, but I'm gonna put this onto a USB stick. You can see I've plugged it into my Mac already. Go to the Constacang page, I'll put a link in the description, and scroll up, 
and you'll see two different versions. Now, the one that says over the air zip is one designed to update a previous build. I always do a fresh install. So click on this one and then click on download. So once that's downloaded and mine's already done, I'm gonna get a Raspberry Pi imager. This will be the same process on Windows uh, or Mac or Linux. Choose OS, scroll all the way to the bottom and use custom. Then we need to pick the lineage OS that we've just downloaded. Hit open, choose storage. Mine is my Samsung bar and hit write and yes. Okay, so that's all finished. So let's unplug that. Now, if I had written that image to an SD card, I could just put it in my Pi and boot up and everything will be fine. But because I'm using a USB stick, I need to do something different. So I'm going to boot up Linux on my Pi. It doesn't really matter what Linux you use. So let's switch that on. And then I'm going to plug my USB stick into a USB 2 socket on my Pi. And it shows up here. So now what I need to do is work out which one is which. And I think this one is the one. So let's open that. Uh, you're looking for the boot partition. And then we need to go into config.txt. And we need to look for boot device. You can see it here. So I need to put a hash here. And I need to delete that one. So basically it's going to ignore booting from SD card. And it's going to boot only from USB. Let's file and save that. And shut this down. So this is the Android USB stick. I'm going to unplug the SSD that I was running Linux from just now. Pop this one into the USB 3 socket. Not the easiest thing with one hand. And uh, switch off. And then switch on again. And that will boot Lineage OS for the first time. Follow all the on-screen instructions to log in. So if I press space and hit start. Accept the license and your time zone. And so this is the bit I mentioned earlier on. So you can have gesture, navigation, two button or three button. I left it on three button because I'm used to it. I'm going to put a pin in and I'm not going to restore. And let's start. So it comes with the bare minimum. I know some people don't like the Play Store. I quite like having the Play Store. So if you want that as an option, uh, go into settings. Scroll down on the left hand side, about tablet. Scroll down on the right hand side, build number. Just keep left clicking that until it says you're a developer. And then pop your pin in. Now we've got a system. Scroll down, developer options. And we can do a search for this. Uh, if I do restart, advanced restart. Scroll down and enable that and then press the home button. Now we need to go into the browser and go to Consta Kang's page, Raspberry Pi 4, and scroll down to the Lineage OS that we're using. Scroll down until you get the bit about installing Google Apps. Here you go, how to install Google Apps. So click on this link. And we need to download the version for our release. So we don't need Android 10 or 11. We need Android 13. And we need the ARM64 version. So let's hit download. And look for the start download, which is this one here. And then pick a mirror. And download. And we can check the progress of our download by going into the apps and files and downloads. You can see 58% not there yet. You can also check it by scrolling down from the top left. So you can see it here downloading. Okay, so that's finished. So let's scroll down from the top again. And we need to go to the power option here. Restart and recovery. If everything's gone correctly, you should have booted into this screen. So let's hit install, go to download, and you can see the file. Click on that and click and swipe to confirm. I usually have to double tap and swipe on my Logitech keyboard and this will install. 
So when that's finished, uh, well I do the wipe Dalvik because I always used to, although it doesn't say it in the instructions, and I know that mine's worked, so let's swipe to wipe. Then we go back, and go back on the back arrow, and back again, and then wipe, and swipe to factory reset. And then reboot system, and then just log back in the normal way. The reason you have to do this twice is because we've just wiped it. You need to wipe it, otherwise it won't install the Google Play Store properly. And we're back up and running, and this time we've got the Google Play Store. If you still get problems, if it doesn't work as I've shown it, maybe try a different display. I've often found that Android can be fussy with displays, although on these later versions you have a load of display modes, but yeah, maybe just plug it into your TV to try starting it up on that. If you're using a USB SATA cable, some are fussy on a Pi. Uh, I've always got a recommended one in my description. And uh, if yours doesn't work, just try it in the USB 2 socket and you might find that it will boot. It's obviously not going to be as fast, but that generally means that you've got an incompatible USB device. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.